Would you like to define mental health and share some basics with parents about how their college experiences affect mental health? Absolutely. Thank you, Stephanie, and good to be with all of you. So when we talk about mental health, it's important to just understand sort of like a few uh, basics. So mental health includes our inner experience of feelings, thoughts, and our behavior. It's our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. We all have a mental health, and it's important for everyone to know uh, that mental health is affected by a complex composite of things like biological factors, genetics, brain chemistry, family history, life experiences, and it's also shaped by social, economic, and physical environments. Just like physical health, there are a range of mental health issues that people experience, minor and mild distress in response to situational stressors, that cause little to no impairment, more chronic conditions like depression or anxiety, if treated or managed well, one can live a pretty functional life. And then there are serious mental illnesses that can be more, much more debilitating and life-threatening. Culture and context shape our views and beliefs about mental health. However, it's important to note that mental health problems are universal and can affect anyone regardless of intelligence, social class, income level, gender, race, ethnicity, or social orientation. These are not character flaws. Nobody chooses to be ill, and you cannot just snap out of it. There are many evidence-based interventions that are effective and available to us today, and people can and do get better. And you mentioned, uh, both of you, the mental health of college students. So we should all be concerned about the mental health and emotional wellness of our college students. Um, and as already been mentioned by both of you, we have a lot of data that depicts increasing trends of stress, depression, and anxiety in college populations. As you just mentioned, Stephanie, while college can be a stressful time for all, students of color do experience some unique challenges. So I'll just highlight a few things here, which is the transition from high school to college can be particularly challenging. Students of color often struggle with finding a sense of belonging, adequate role models, mentors, faculty who reflect their experience. They may struggle with developing a supportive community. And then there are additional pressures to appear or be successful, navigate financial insecurity, so some of the most notable stressors though for college students of color are experiences of bias, negative stereotypes, prejudice, and racial discrimination or other kinds of discrimination. We also find in the last many years that witnessing national events of racially motivated violence can also have a vicarious impact, feelings of anxiety, fear, being exposed to graphic images in constant news feeds can trigger trauma-like symptoms and feelings of be feeling perpetually unsafe. So many of these experiences to conclude can create a sense of daily exhaustion, feeling overwhelmed, anxious, isolated, sleep difficulties, just daily disruptions in functioning to more serious emotional mental health concerns that compromise student learning and well-being. So we know that mental health problems early in life affect outcomes in all areas of functioning later in life. And one of the key areas which I hope we can address in our uh, conversation today is that consistently across studies, there are marked disparities in the area of seeking and receiving help. So data from several national studies show that college students, with mental, uh, college students of color with mental health difficulties overall do not seek or receive help like our 